Hey everyone, with everything that's going on in Israel, I saw a message in this week's Torah portion that I thought was very powerful and very relevant. We know that uh, Abraham, Abraham, it was time to find his son Isaac a wife. He gets like a wife, so he sends his servant, his trusty student servant, Eliezer, to go find him a wife. And Eliezer on his way, could you imagine trying to find Avraham's son, Isaac, trying to find him a wife? Can you imagine the pressure of finding and choosing the right person? So he makes a prayer to God and he said, God, help me find the right, the right girl. And this will be the sign. When we ask the people that are there for a drink of water, they're going to give us water, but also on their own, they're going to offer to give water to my camels as well. And that's the story as it went. Eliezer goes, all of a sudden this girl comes running out, Rebecca, Rivka, and he says, could I please have a drink of water? And she says, of course, let me get you some water, drink water. And then she says, let me also give and bring to your camels as well. And that's when at that moment Eliezer said, ah, oh, this is the wife, uh, this is the wife for Yitzchak, my, 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 uh, my master Avraham is going to be super pleased. And the story goes on, we'll hold off on that. But the obvious question is, it's, the rabbis ask the question, is that when you're looking for a spouse, there's a lot of factors that you're looking for. The fact that she does kindness, that's good. But that's, that's, that's the initial, the middle, and the end, not just the clincher, that's everything. So much so that he's choosing a wife that's gonna be the future mother of Yaakov, of Jacob, and then eventually the 12 tribes and all the entire Jewish people in, in history. And you're deciding that all based on the kindness that she does? It seems like a lot. It seems like a lot to ride on. So the rabbis explain as follows. They say is that what Eliezer saw is that when someone asks someone to help them out and they say, yeah, sure, I'll help you. That's good. You're being kind. That's, a, that's one level. But to go out of their way and offer to do a kindness that's not asked of them, that's a whole other level. And when he saw that she did that with such alacrity and such excitement and happiness <clears throat> to feed him in and then his camels, he said, this is the right person. And to explain the reason why that is, is because a person's nature is not to necessarily do for others. Our nature is to be more relaxed and more uh, take time for ourselves. But he saw that she went out of her way, went against her physical nature to do what was right. He said, someone like that, she'll be able to learn. Even though she came from a house of idol worships, her parents, her parents and brother was idol, were idol, idol worshipers. But he said, someone who goes against their grain to do what's right could be taught, could be taught in the service of God. If God said this is the right thing to do, they're going to be able to do it. Go ahead and do it. What's that message to us? I think the message is that we also are people that are made of our body and our soul. And our natural state is to not necessarily do, not necessarily go out of our comfort zone. But we see the most important thing is in the service of Hashem is that in order to have greatness, we have to have certain friction of what's a little bit uncomfortable for us. What's a little bit that's something that we don't necessarily want to do. Usually, <coughs> usually there is when it's something that we know is important to do, but we don't want to do it. If we could push against our grain and go ahead and do that, we open ourselves up a tremendous amount of ability to grow to greater heights. And I think what's going on in Israel after it happened October 7th, we saw something that should change us forever. We cannot be the same people. The problem is, is that we're stuck with the inertia of our human bodies of not wanting to necessarily do, to be able to be relaxed and be able to be, go about our days. But if we could have fight, that, fight that inertia, fight that body and say, you know what, Hashem, I'm gonna do for my brothers and sisters, I'm gonna do a mitzvah, I'm gonna do something that's gonna help protect them all the way out over there, we start breaking down that barrier and what that could lead to is a tremendous amount of connection to God and the ability to be able to do the mitzvahs and becomes easier and easier. So just something to think about is that we want to do something good. Don't let the inertia of our regular routine in our life hold us back, but try to find ways to be able to overcome and get closer to Hashem by following His, His mitzvahs and doing mitzvahs and train ourselves to be able to perform those acts of kindness and so on, to be able to have control of our bodies in the, uh, as a result. Wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom.